بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. So I had a conversation with a friend of mine that called me today, and、um, they wanted to know, you know, what did I think was going to happen in the future with the whole、uh, Israel war and、uh, assault and genocide on the Palestinians, and did I think that?、Uh, did I think that things were going to change?、Uh, you know, what were my prognostications for the future? Wa alaikum salam. And I said, well, you know, personally, I don't really have, you know, I don't, I don't really make predictions. But, you know, he's like, well, what, what, what do you think? I said, well,、uh, perhaps there's a moment here that we can learn something. Naturally, we would all love to see some kind of change、uh, take place. But we also have to realize that、uh, the powers that be, many of The powers that be are highly incentivized、uh, to have things remain status quo. They are very highly incentivized for things not to change. So, if you take, for instance, Netanyahu, Netanyahu is obviously very, very highly incentivized to、uh, keep things going as they are. If for no other reason, that that's probably the only way that he can reasonably try to stay out of jail. <laughs>、um, He's also running from his own political opposition from within Israel. So there are,、uh, you know, he's not a very popular leader、uh, within the Israeli context. And so he's made some temporary allegiances with some other,、uh, with some other political groups within Israel、uh, that don't like each other, but see this as an opportunity.、Uh, You know, to work with each other. And of course, they, they all share something in common, which is their absolute animosity and hatred、uh, of the Palestinian people and of Muslims in general. <laughs>、um, and so I said, you know, for that reason, we can expect more of the same, especially g- given the fact that we have this、uh, election <laughs> that's going to take place in a few months at the latter part of the year. And it seems that both the Democrats and the Republicans are positioning themselves to use、uh, this as a sort of political hockey puck. They're going to try to position themselves、uh, to use you know, the, the war to their own advantage. And that it might be possible that we will see some change happen、uh, you know, after that. That being said, how can we look at This kind of difficulty, right, through the lens of our Islam. And so the first is the verse that I'm reminded of it at the beginning, or roughly the beginning of the second chapter of the Quran, Surah Al Baqarah, where Allah says, Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim, Wasta'inu bis sabri wa salah, innaha la kabiratun illa ala al khashi'id. So Allah Ta'ala says that uh, uh, seek. Seek your own help and assistance first through sabr and secondly through salah. So, as I've always said, that the term sabr, meaning patience, is somewhat insufficient, and that really perhaps is better to be articulated and translated as determination, right? Be resilient, be determinant,、uh, and Draw upon th- that as a strength, as your isti'ana, as your, as your help. And then, of course,、uh, through being steadfast and consistent in your prayer. And that is going to be actually very hard for many and most people to do because people want results, people want immediate change. And we are all tired, let alone the Palestinians who are there suffering through this.、Uh, you know, we're, we're all being bombarded with imagery and we're emotionally you know, very much worn out from having to、uh, be front, center, and stage to th- this atrocity. And that is extremely difficult to weather. And that will be hard for most people that are looking for immediate change. I said, 
if we look at this from a broader angle, that indeed what is happening is horrible, despicable, ugly, repugnant, unimaginable. But we also see that this has been a moment that is bringing people to Islam. It's bringing people to uh, have an appreciation of Islam. It's bringing, you know, uh, and so even though it might be temporarily a horrific thing, that Allah Ta'ala can make something positive out of it. And the only way that one can open one's mind and heart to that grand possibility <clears throat> is through reflecting on the Qur'an and the messages that are in there. Uh, and that indeed is going to be a, a tremendous affair for, for, for most people. Um, the, the second one, of course, is some statements by the Prophet Sallallahu which is very interesting in that we know that he spoke of on several occasions that if a person were to suffer some kind of uh, difficulty. And so, for instance, you take this one and it's, uh, it's related in uh, one collection of a hadith that's graded as uh, authentic, as sahih, in which uh, Abu Huraira reports that the Prophet ﷺ, you know, stated, he said, Marra rajul Muslim. A Muslim man passed by bi shokin fit tariq. He passed by a thorn or a bramble that was lying in the road. Faqala la umitanna hadha shawk. And so he, the, the man said, I'm going to move this out of the road, right? La yudurru rajalan musliman. So that it wouldn't harm, right, another Muslim, another Muslim, another Muslim man. So, as a result, that person was forgiven. And so, if that is just merely the, the, the removing of a potential harm, and a person would have their uh, deeds expiated, then what does that say for people who are actually suffering harm? Uh, another one, likewise, that is recorded in Muslim, in which the Prophet Sallallahu stated, he said, "Ma uh, min musiba, there is no difficulty yusabu biha al Muslim that in, uh, afflicts uh, a Muslim illa kufira biha anhu hatta al shaukati yu uh, Even if it were a person that would be to be pricked with a thorn, it would be a kafara." It would be a means of expiating sin. And of course, again, what we, what we have seen our brothers and sisters going through over in Philistine is far more than the pricking of a thumb. And so it takes a certain discipline and a certain mindset to be able to look upon tragedy, look upon calamity, but then learning to see it from a broader level, meaning that whatever, whatever harm, any Muslim goes through, it will be some kafara, something on this level that Allah Ta'ala uh, is going to, inshallah, expiate things of such enormity that uh, perhaps our brothers and sisters will be مِنَ الَّذِينَ يَدَخُلُونَ الْجَنَّ بِغَرِ حِسَابِ that they indeed might be those who would enter into paradise uh, you know, without having to have a reckoning uh, for what they did in this life. Um, and so there's often the temptation to say, well, what did they do to deserve that? Uh, nothing. They, they, there's no saying that they did just as if, if you prick your thorn, what did you do to deserve the pricking of, of your finger? It's not that you did something, but rather uh, the promise is that what? Dif difficulties that you are afflicted by will be a means of ultimately having a, a, a beneficial impact on one's end, on one's khatma, on one's ending. Inshallah, nasallaha khatma jamila. We ask Allah, of course, for uh, a good ending. And I say this because the constant bombardment of the news, of the imagery, of the, of the body parts, of the blood, of the screaming and the, the terror and the things... It can take an enormous toll on one's heart, on one's soul, and it could perhaps even 
if not you know conditioned and not of the inclination uh, to reflect upon uh, the words of the Prophet Sallallahu and of course upon the beautiful words of the Quran to remind us to have perspective on all things then there is a chance uh, that that could have a detrimental effect on one's iman and so I just wanted to put this here to remind us that you know that, that, that is an enormous affair except for the people of Khushur and as I've said many times from the mimbar and from uh, you know from the pulpit and from the classes that I teach you know you will often hear Muslims invoke the word Khushur and then described in various ways that you know Khushur uh, which is, you know, when, when, a, when a Muslim prays, they want to have a certain type of focus or concentration in their prayer where they're not distracted by things and that they are diligent and dedic- as sort of dedication to the prayer. And of course, there's all this gymnastics that's gone to try to explain uh, what the word means, even though the verse continues by saying, الَّذِينَ يَظُنُّونَ أَنَّهُمْ مُرَاقُوا رَبِّهِمْ So the, uh, this is actually given two definitions, all right? It was given one definition with two parts in it, right? So the verse that follows, who are the kha- who are the practitioners of khushu' who are the khashi'un? They are the ones that they... They يَظُنُّونَ They are the ones that know that what أَنَّهُمْ مُرَاقُوا رَبِّهِمْ They are... They are literally going to meet their Lord. That is the first uh, important definition for Khoshua. It is to know that you're going to go back to Allah. You're going to be judged by Him. You're going to stand in front of Him. Your book will be brought out and will be read. And your life and its and, a, and the summary of your life and all the actions of your life and, and the contents of your heart and everything, the, 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 what beliefs that you held, that will all be brought out. And so the person, when they are seeking help, aid, and assistance through reflecting upon the truths of Islam and about being diligent in the prayer, that is the one that it will not be an enormous affair to look upon calamity, to look upon difficulty, and first go, I'm going to go back to Allah. And anyone that is afflicted with difficulty is going to go back to Allah. And so, through that, it allows one to have a... It allows one to look at the, the, the pain of this life, the grief in this life, the suffering of this life. It allows one to see a beginning and an end to it. It allows one to see um, the dimensions of it, that it is not infinite, that it is not uh, everlasting, uh, that it has dimensionality to it, it has limitation to it. And so that person, inshallah, that suffers something, especially the Muslim, because in the first statement of the Prophet I mentioned, it is important that uh, the man mentioned Rajal Muslim, that his intention was, you know, that number one, he was a Muslim man that saw this. And so this should be the disposition of the Muslim that they see harm or the potential for harm and they recognize it and they understand. Of course, yes, the person wanted to remove it, but in the second statement, it said, what, anything that does happen to afflict you? it will expiate some of your sins. And if we understood the enormity uh, of sins and having to be questioned about them and interrogated about them, uh, whether in the grave or on the day of judgment, if we understood the enormity of that, then we, could, uh, we, can, we can see suffering and difficulty in a whole other light as a means of, while that might be hard here, the most difficult thing will be to have to atone for that then on that day. And if that allows me to not have to atone for it, then, you know, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. And then what the second part was, وَأَنَّهُمْ إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ And that without a doubt, they're going to go back to Allah. So just a quick reflection on that to help us uh, console ourselves, uh, to gain perspective, to regroup you know, both collectively and individually and within ourselves when we see these things uh, that we mitigate or manage the, the, the impact and that we learn to see the, the ultimate good that will happen, also the justice, that none of these people will escape anything. 
Uh, it's in fact, you look at all of these major leaders from the from the Zios and you, you know, like like the Netanyahu's and the others, they're very close from leaving this life. They're very even if they were to live another hundred years, they're very close. Life is like that, and so they're merely a hop, skip, and a jump from being held accountable. But on that day, while they're being busy, uh, tortured, or whatever it is that they will have as their recompense, uh, I will not be thinking about them at all. And I'll be thinking about myself and what I will have to be accountable for. So, inshallah, just giving this as a, as a reminder and a means of taking care of ourselves uh, and, 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 and most importantly, promoting resilience. Just as much as you know, people are going out there and you know, protesting or marching or fighting legal battles or whatever that it is, um, you know, we, we, have to, we have to be resilient to understand that all of this will come to an end. Uh, and inshallah, we, we bear with it and we withstand it all for the pleasure of Allah. And inshallah, we will all be recompensed for that, for the good and for the bad. So. It's getting on, almost time to pray Asr, inshallah. And uh, maybe we'll see you tomorrow with another reflection. Wa salawat Allah ta'ala ala nabihi al-kareem wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.